Now, what did I learn from it? I learned that Mark Kyo is... Tipperary are going to have to hang their hat on Mark Kyo being playing on the inside uh, forward line this year. And the reason that he's so important is he does for Tipperary what so few forwards have been doing for Tipperary for the last couple of years, which is get out in front, win the ball, turn and go at your man. Because that's the way that you create goals. Obviously, if you're able to deliver it well enough to the inside line. Now, it's always great if you can have runners through the centre who create goals either by drawing a man or by carrying it the whole way in and burying it. You know, for example, Jake Morris might be a player who does that. But Mark Kyo is very important in the sense that he will test a man out. He's physically very strong. And I think his instinct is to go at the man. And Tip scored five goals in the first half. Every one of them you can trace back to Kyo because he put two of them into the back of the net. He set up Jason Ford for one. He sort of won or, uh, or was battling in a ruck that allowed Michael Breen to solo away from it and bat it into the back of the net. And there was one other goal for Seamus Kendi. Now, Seamus Kendi was playing wing back, and I, th- I think he's more suited there than he had been playing wing back or centre back earlier in the year. But he followed the ball up the field. Mark Kyo gave him a nice little ball in over the top, and he finished it from a single ang- or similar angle to where Ozzy Gleeson missed against Kilkenny, you know, just to the side of the, of the, um, of, of the 14, and he put it into the back of the net. So from tip, it was positive in the sense that they barely created a goal chance in four games. Like, think about it. The one goal that came was a short puck out from uh, Owen Murphy that was intercepted by Dennis Maher in the Kilkenny game, and he fed it in for, for Jake Morris to put it into the back of the net. So to then go out and score seven, that's really, really positive because it makes you think, OK, maybe Tipperary aren't quite as blunt up front. Maybe there are goals in the team. Now, who else played well? John McGrath ended up with 2-3, the same as Mark Kyo. But I feel like John McGrath is putting huge pressure on himself to deliver because the last couple of years, take out maybe the All-Ireland final against Kilkenny in 2019, it hasn't fully happened for him. And he found himself out of the team, nearly scored a great goal against Watford towards the end of that quarterfinal last year. But it hasn't really happened for him. And the first maybe seven or eight balls that went into him in this game, now some of them were like high balls that he could catch. He was in front of his man. Now it wasn't uncontested, but it was very much his hand was there and he could have caught it. And he spilled them on the ground. And, you know, myself and the journalist beside me were a little bit like, geez, you can see the confidence isn't quite there. And then another ball or two came to him low. You know, that sort of one bounce, it's there to be controlled, turn and, and, you know, go about your business. And it just wasn't coming up for him. And you were thinking, you know what, this is, it's not really happening for him. But to be fair to Colin Bonner, he left him out there. And eventually he got a goal. Robert Burns solo through the middle, give him a hand pass. And he finished it low under goalkeeper Paul McMullen. You were like, OK, that's that's a confidence booster for John McGrath. Another ball came in later on. He knocked over a point or two. Then there was a crossfield ball from Paul Flynn, who had come on in the corner. He wasn't in a shooting position, so he hit it over across the 21. McGrath let it beat himself. He was about to. He was looking to see if there anyone to set up. Instead, he turned inside his man, threw it down on the stick, buried it into the back of the net. And you were like, now the confidence is up. He knocked over another point a couple of minutes later. And now I'm wondering, is John McGrath confidence why he's going to be back in the next game or two? Is Colin Bonner going to say, right, maybe he does deserve a start here now? Because we've seen that spark, the confidence that he had in the club game, you know, when he won man of the match seven weeks in a row between both codes there at the end of the year, is that going to be there? So those are some of the immediate positives. Now, there, there are other ones. I don't know if you, so, any point you want to pick up there or if I keep going. No, the John McGrath one is interesting. I think sometimes uh, with a fellow where you know he has the class and he's up to it at inter-county level, which he obviously is, sometimes you have to just let them play themselves into form. Sometimes they have to play poorly in a couple of games and you have to just keep going with them, keep persevering and believe that uh, they believe that they're going to catch fire. And it looks like uh, it looks like they are going to... It looks like he might potentially catch fire. Based on the club season, like in a disappointing couple of county seasons, there's no point in saying any different. But the club season was massive for him. And as you said, he just kept this level of form that was outrageous. Um, and he's finding it maybe tricky to replicate that at county level, but he's done it before. So there's no reason to say he can't do it again. It looks like even when not playing that well and other lads are really, really flying around him, that Bonner is persevering with him. And you have to believe that a lad like that will catch fire. And um, and it that's why you just you kind of leave them on. You kind of have to make an exception to the rule with some guys. Because they need John McGrath. Play. They need John McGrath on form come Munster. And taking him off at half time or after 40 or 45 minutes without a score or playing poorly is not what's going to work for him. So it looks like 
from Bonner's point of view, hopefully persevering will work there. And just interested, Shane, you probably wouldn't have learned much about defence. But like, like, what do you think the makeup of like the Tips League is over now? Hmm. What what are the starting six def- six defenders going to be? Do we think are the two midfielders? Well, if you go on the match program here from from the game at the weekend against Antrim, and there are comments coming in there saying that basically Antrim are a disheartened team, and you know they did make changes because they're targeting that game against Offaly. That might be totally true. So everything I'm saying is framed in that context. So, but I'm looking at it and say, wondering where can Tipperary kind of kick on for the summer here? And there are crumbs of comfort. I see like Connor Bowl. He gets the ball and he's solo and down the center and trying to set lads up. His instinct isn't always to just take on the <clears throat> the pot shot. And that's something. Remember after the Waterford game, I kind of pointed out one situation where he did shoot over his shoulder when he could have soloed down the center. But there were, to me, there was like there was a marked change in Tipperary, whether this was intentional or just the way it worked out, that he was trying to solo from his man and test his man. Michael Breen was trying to, Norm McGrath was able to pick off a point or two here or there. Jason Ford looked dangerous when he was inside. And I'm actually wondering, will, will Kyo and uh, Ford be inside a bit and let John McGrath roam a little bit, or, or how will it pan out? But to answer your question about the back line, Kyle Barrett's definitely going to start at number two. And like, you know the way against Kilkenny, he tried a stick pass back to Brian Hogan at one stage and put it out for a 65. He actually did try to do a crossfield stick pass to Brian Hogan during this game and put it out for a throw-in. So, not a throw-in, a wrong, wrong sport there, but put it out for a line ball. Uh, but like he was brilliant. Um, but that to me just kind of pointed out that Tipperary are going to try and work the ball backwards to go forwards. Uh, so it'll be Barrett. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be James Quigley because he hasn't put a foot wrong. And even though he mightn't be the most um, flashy player in the world, he's maybe he just knows how to play full back because he'll do the right thing with the ball. He'll try and give it to someone who can do damage and he'll just try and mark his man. So like every team needs a stopper. So he's looking good. I think Craig Morgan is going to keep his uh, spot at corner back. And I think it, it might just be the team that we're seeing now. There's obviously confidence in Robert Byrne and the way he's trying to use the ball. Again, I think he needs to stop batting high balls when he, he can catch them. But I think he's starting to settle into the role. He's an abrasive player. Just as long as the discipline's okay. Rona Maher's going to play at centre-back. He was really good, scored three from play. And Seamus Kennedy, who had, I'd said earlier in the year is more suited to wing-back, I, I, I think, or maybe one of the full-back line, you know, because he's got that pace. But anyway, look, I think he's going to end up there. I'd like Barry Heffernan to be a wing-back, but it looks like he's going to be midfield. And then Dan McCormick beside him. So I, I think Tipperary are probably, after how the last couple of games have gone, and the way that they fell away against Waterford, I think this was a useful confidence-injecting performance, and a couple of players have been found. 